Today we're going to look at uh, some concepts of momentum. So you should have already watched a few videos about momentum. We'll go th through a brief discussion about momentum and then try to finalize with conservation of momentum. So first of all, we have here a Newton's cradle, and you've seen these before, where we have the uh, five balls suspended by this uh, fishing line or type of string here. And so what we do is we start off with a basic uh, example of momentum. And momentum, we like to think of momentum as how we can predict uh, the new velocity or the force or the uh, a change in energy during a collision. So let's say if we have one ball that crashes into this other set. So we start off by saying that the momentum of the first ball ha is transferred through all of them until we get to the last ball. So we can see that the momentum of one ball has enough momentum to move one ball on the end, okay? And then so we do our second experiment, we pull two, and we say, well, how much momentum do two have? Well, two has enough momentum to move two of the other ball. And then we move three. And three has enough momentum to move three. Okay, now we'll move four. And four has enough momentum to move four. So what we start to see is we see this idea that momentum deals with mass and velocity of an object. So momentum given by symbol P is mass times velocity. So if we have the mass of one ball, it has enough momentum to move the mass of one ball on the other side. And so again, the momentum of two mass now has enough momentum to move two mass on the other side. So momentum is a quantity relating the mass of an object to the, how fast that object is traveling. Now, we can make an object change its momentum by changing the velocity. So we know that a lot of objects accelerate, and because they're accelerating, they change their velocity, so therefore must be some change in momentum. And so what we look at here is how do we change the momentum? Well, the mass of an object times its change in velocity requires a force to act on it. So we have our uh, little toy school bus here, and we would say, if I want that to go from zero meters per second to some new velocity, I must apply a force. Now, what if I apply that force for just a fraction of a second? you don't have very much change in velocity or very much change in momentum. But what if I apply that force for two or three seconds? Now the change in velocity or the momentum is going to go up and be greater. And that brings us to the quantity of time. So the change in momentum of an object is what we call impulse. And that deals with the force and how much time that force acts on an object. And that will equal the change in momentum or the mass times change in velocity. So we can use these relationships to solve a lot of different problems. We might say, for example, if three newtons of force is applied for two seconds, what's the new velocity of this object? Versus what's the uh, new velocity if the force is applied for one second, then you'd have a different amount. So some things we talk about in momentum with impulse, we use terms like, we might say, follow through. We don't really say that in physics necessarily, but in sports events, you might say, follow through. You want the bat, okay? So if we have our bat, you want it to stay in contact with the ball. The force on that ball if I can make it stay in contact for a greater amount of time, I can make the mass of that ball reach a new velocity. I can have it travel a greater distance, okay? So that is impulse, simply force time time. The unit for momentum, P, the symbol is P. The unit for momentum is a kilogram meter per second. So there is no new unit. Okay, now. So that is impulse. 
Now, the second thing we can look at with momentum on this is this idea of conservation of momentum, that momentum can be transferred from one object to another. And the way I like to demonstrate that is to start off with two here. So we take two of these and we just drop them at the same time. And they're bouncing straight back. You might think that the ball is bouncing, but you'll see if I hold this side, if I hold this side over here, and then I drop that, the ball doesn't bounce. Okay? So these balls are not bouncing. They are transferring the momentum through the balls. Okay? So what happens is, as we look at this example here, we see the momentum of this first object, of ball one, is traveling this way. So when it gets over here, it has enough momentum to move the mass of one sphere. So P1 goes this way. Well, this first P2, if you will, has enough momentum, and it goes straight in this way so that P2 over here is conserved. So the momentum of this first ball travels straight past the momentum of the second ball without interrupting each other and hits the second. So these are not bouncing. It's the momentum of one ball causing the momentum of the other ball to be reflected back. Transfer of momentum. We can see that if we drop two on this side, then we should have enough momentum to transfer two out over here. And then if we drop one, we should only have enough momentum for one to go out on that side. So let's see this experiment. And sure enough, the momentum of two travels through the momentum of one. Okay. And we could repeat that experiment even with three. So if we start with three, you have enough momentum to move three and one, enough momentum to move one, okay? All right, so this shows us that momentum is conserved. Conservation of momentum during collisions, okay? Now there's a couple types of collisions that we want to look at. And the two types of collisions are elastic and inelastic, okay? And there's a really short uh, explanation of those. So two types. Of collisions. Elastic. And. Elastic. Now we like to think of this kind of like there's a continuum. So. It's never really truly inelastic or inelastic. It's somewhere on a continuum, somewhere on this scale. And the difference is inelastic stick together. And elastic bounce off. Or separate. They start separate. Well, maybe they don't just start separate, but they end up separate, if you will. So we have our little bus and trash truck example. If I crash this truck, truck, trash truck into the bus, they separate. That is an elastic collision. Now, if it's purely, if it was 100% elastic, then what we would see is a complete transfer of momentum from one object to the other. So 100% elastic we're going to say is rare okay it's rare that we have a hundred percent elastic <clears throat> because actually there's some amount of time where these objects stay in contact okay for example if we take this ball here and we were to hit this ball with some bat or something you see that the ball is deformed for a certain amount of time so even though we strike the ball and the ball is separate from me, you'd say, well, that's elastic, and it is an elastic collision. However, if we were to strike this ball with any good force, there's some deformation which shows that the ball and the object stay in contact with each other for a certain amount of time before the ball is launched off. 
So during a time when they're in contact, during this moment while it's in contact, right before it leaves, it's somewhat of an inelastic collision. So it's very rare, and you could ar almost even argue that elast perfectly elastic collisions are these very rare cases when the object is not deformed. I mean, even very rigid objects like golf balls and things, when they're struck, there's some amount of deformation that occurs. You can go out and watch slow-mo videos and see how a ball is deformed when it's being struck. So, a perfectly inelastic collision is when the two objects run together and stay together, okay? So we see it in elastic collisions all the time. Uh, two cars crash and they stick together, or the classic example, one football player tackling a second football player and they stay together. So 100% inelastic collisions, you could argue those exist, and 100% inelastic is a true thing, but 100% elastic is rare. And then the last thing on that is if there's somewhere in the middle, then the other thing we find is the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of these objects. So what we find is in a truly 100% inelastic that kinetic energy is conserved. The velocity before is equal to the velocity after in some case, some way, and that makes the kinetic energy conserved. Over here we have an inelastic, so you might say you have an object mass one, and an object mass one, again, two objects, individual mass. So this might be traveling two meters per second. This object is a velocity of zero. Well, when they stick together, the mass is now ad added together or twice. So when these two objects now colliding, they're going to actually go slower. The velocity of that new object is going to decrease. So we lost some velocity. Over here, we had twice the velocity. We lost some velocity, so we've lost some kinetic energy. Okay? And, of course, we don't lose energy. We lost or better to say converted to other forms. It's converted into some other form in this inelastic collision. And specifically, the forms of potential energy, elastic potential, and so forth when an object is deformed. So <clears throat> when a car or something is in a wreck, right, if we have this bus and this trash truck, if this trash truck were to hit that bus and push it and stay with it, that would be an inelastic collision. But what's going to happen is that front end of that bumper and that back end of that bus are all going to get crimpled up, and that is that other form of energy we're talking about. Energy into crumpling and crinkling and breaking all the portions and parts for it to stay together. So with our ball, if we, some part of the inelastic, while it's connected right here, the energy of pushing that ball in and deforming that ball is converted to other forms. So if you're 100% elastic, there's no deformation, no manipulation of energy. The velocity before and the velocity after is going to be the same relative to the masses of the objects, but it's going to be 100% conversion. As soon as we get off this 100% side, we're going to see that the momentum is still uh, conserved, but the kinetic energy is not conserved. The velocity decreases somehow because we've converted that to other forms. Okay, so now we want to look at a couple quick example problems, and it won't take but just a few to work, and you should be able to work the rest of them uh, on your own. So we start off with, here is our uh, formulas that we can use, okay? Now, what I like to do over years is I used to use this whole big formula and write it out every single time. What I like to do now is just solve for the pieces and think about. And these problems usually use numbers that are simple enough for us to do that. For example, here we have two train cars that are separated before a collision. Now, after the collision, they are connected. So we know that is an inelastic collision. Okay, it's an inelastic collision, which means kinetic energy is not conserved, which means in terms of what we have to solve for is that the, the velocity after is going to be somewhat less than it was before. 
So we start off with the momentum before. So the momentum for 4 is simply P equals mass times velocity. So 10 times 4 is 40. 30 times 0 is 0. So the total momentum before. So before is 40 plus 0 or 40 kilogram. Excuse me, that's not actually a kilogram. In this case, it's a 40 ton meter per second. Okay? What about the momentum after? Well, the 40 before must equal the momentum after. So the momentum before must equal the momentum after. So if we have 40 before, we must have 40 after. Okay? All right. So 40 must equal the mass of the car times the velocity. Well, this car was 10. This car was 30. So the combined mass is 40. So 40 times 40, excuse me, 40 equals 40 times V. And so V equals 1 meter per, excuse me, wrote that incorrect. Velocity equals 1 meter per second. Okay? All right, so that's the idea there. If they combine together, simply the you total the masses and then use the momentum equation to solve it. So the momentum before must equal the momentum after. Solve for the momentum of each object, add them together, and work from there. So I'd like for you to try the next sample problems.